tonight we've got a Spygate thread from Brian Cates. Pay attention, lots of details. Remember, the key text Page and Strzok exchanged about getting the Oconus Lures approved. That's going to come up soon. An Oconus Lure is an intelligence operative tasked to make an approach to a suspected foreign agent. Oconus means outside the continental United States. O con us. There's always paperwork. There's always a paper trail. We're going to learn who the specific Oconus lures were, who they were tasked to approach, and what kind of pitch they were briefed to make to the targets to hopefully elicit what kind of response. I have long suspected that rather than being a Russian agent out to recruit George Papadopoulos, Professor Joseph Mifsud was actually an FBI Oconus lure, brought in, briefed, and then pointed at the Trump campaign advisor. Halper was also an Oconus lure sent at him. Mifsud was sent at Papadopoulos to plant the fake offer of Russian help to the Trump campaign. Then both Halper and Downer were sent at Papadopoulos to get him to repeat the offer while they recorded him. And they couldn't get him to do it. Downer, especially, was so clumsy in his attempts to ask Papadopoulos leading questions about Russia while holding up his phone to record the conversation that he immediately raised George's suspicions. A whole lot of people have this idea that George isn't very bright. Andrew McCarthy makes it clear in his book Ball of Collusion, he thinks both Papadopoulos and Carter Page are kind of dumb. I don't make that mistake. Papadopoulos' instincts are certainly good. He smelled a rat with Downer, and later, he, when he was just handed $10,000 before taking a flight, he made sure he ditched it before getting on the plane, and to this day, nobody knows where that $10,000 is or where he stashed it. The FBI agents who intercepted him at the airport were surprised Papadopoulos did not have the money on him. Someday, he's going to reveal where that $10,000 is when he's good and ready. Page also is about to play an important role in all of this. Like Papadopoulos, Page had intel operatives sent at him to make approaches and to try to get him to say certain things. Now, it's all about to come out, and professional operatives were unable to elicit anything from Page or Papadopoulos that could be used against them. The transcripts of Halper's secret recordings with both men are kind of hilarious to read. He keeps trying to lead them into talking about Russia, especially endlessly boasting to Papadopoulos about how many top cool Russians he knows. He knows so many Russian intel people. But despite the fact that Halper and Mifsud and Downer and Azra Turk and so on are involved in intelligence work, they can't get either Papadopoulos or Carter Page to make an actual incriminating statement. In fact, Papadopoulos outright tells Halper that being a Russian agent is treason. Had Papadopoulos simply repeated the offer Mifsud made to him and said he'd related the offer to anyone else in the Trump campaign, the Crossfire Hurricane team would have used that to get their FISA warrant to spy on the Trump campaign. But they couldn't get him to say it. Had Carter Page ever even hinted he'd been approached by Russians with an offer to help the Trump campaign, the FBI would have made those statements by Page the basis for the FISA warrant application. Instead, because Page never said anything incriminating, these dirty cops were forced to go with the Steele dossier. They can't get these guys to say anything they can use on tape with Halper and Downer recording. So... They have to go with the second and third hand stories from the Steele dossier. The FBI wasted months 
coordinating and bringing in and tasking Oconus lures to send at these two idiots to record them and catch them saying incriminating things, but the morons just won't cooperate by actually saying anything incriminating. It's now August 2016. What to do? They had Steele's stuff way earlier than they say they did. Why'd they only resort to using it in the FISA warrant in late August? Because from around February to August of 2016, they were hoping their Oconus lures were going to get something on tape, and they never did. That's why they hurriedly throw together a warrant application using Steele's dossier as, a, as the main evidence that Carter Page is a Russian agent. You know, the guy who had just helped the CIA send a Russian spy to prison and the CIA told them Page was their asset. The Steele dossier was always a last resort. They held it back for a long time, hoping the Oconus lures were going to get incriminating tapes that never materialized. So now, they only have about a month and a half to the election. They knew the bullshit in this dossier was not going to stand up to even the most basic kinds of scrutiny. So, they took no effort themselves to verify the information and they hid from the court that the confidential human source supplying this information to the FBI was a Clinton operative. They hid from the court that the Crossfire Hurricane team hadn't even interviewed Steele's main subsource for this info that Carter Page was a Russian agent before submitting the application. They hid from the court that the CIA had told them in writing that Page was a CIA asset. What they did to Page ripped the lid off of the huge scandal of the fact that the FISA court long ago became pretty much a rubber stamp for surveillance warrants on U.S. citizens. When DOJ Inspector General Horowitz and his crack investigators looked at 20-plus other FISA cases, guess what they found? Not one of the cases his office reviewed followed the rules, laws, and procedures concerning FISA cases. Not a single one. Much to Horowitz's horror, four of the cases he looked at didn't even have the legally required Woods file. And remember, these are cases where the FISA court granted the warrant. Who are these four other American citizens that ended up being spied on by the U.S. government when the agents handling that case didn't even bother with the pretense of a Woods file? I want to know. These two guys did nothing wrong, and they were targeted and accused of being traitors to their country. I really admire the way George flipped the script on the Spygate plotters. He's supposed to have been an easily disposable patsy, but he keeps coming back. I even wrote a column about how Papadopoulos flipped the script. There's nothing wrong with taking advantage of an opportunity that is handed to you by people out to destroy you. Nothing whatsoever. From UncoverDC.com, The Sad Tragic Tale of George Papadopoulos. Carter Page was, has also flipped the script the Spygate plotters wrote for him. So has General Flynn and Svetlana Lokova. The truth is in the process of setting all the real victims of Spygate free. Halper just got Svetlana Lokova's publisher to cancel her book about how he smeared her as a Russian agent to discredit Michael Flynn. He still thinks he can keep the truth com from coming out. But he's wrong. He can't stop what's coming. All these slimy people and what they did to the innocent targets is going to be fully aired out to the public this year. More evidence will emerge, and soon Durham and about a dozen other U.S. attorneys are going to start showing their work. Gonna be a fun summer. Sweet dreams to all you Oconus lures out there.